Hello everyone. Today's topic of discussion is irrigation in endodontics. First of all, you should know what the term irrigation means. See, irrigation literally means therapeutic flushing of the body part with stream of the liquid. Similarly, in root canal irrigation, we irrigate the root canals with the irrigating solution. Now the question is, why do we need irrigation of root canal when we are doing proper mechanical instrumentation? Now, just see, the goal of root canal therapy is to eliminate the infection, which is done by thorough cleaning and shaping of entire root canal space. As we know, root canals have a complex internal anatomy, like there is presence of lateral canals, accessory canals, webs, fins, isthmi, and multiple foramina. All these make it difficult for complete disinfection with mechanical instrumentation alone. Therefore, an irrigant is needed to disinfect the canals completely. So we can say that the purpose of using an intracanal irrigant is number one, the most importantly, to loosen the dentinal shavings and microorganisms from the canal walls along with flushing out the debris from the root canal. Irrigants also dissolve the organic tissue which is present and trapped in the accessory and the lateral canals. These areas are inaccessible to mechanical instrumentation. Irrigants also have antibacterial actions against the microorganisms present in the root canal. And next is that whether medicated or not, an irrigant lubricates the canal for ease of instrumentation and increases the cutting in efficiency of the instruments. So from these points, we can conclude that and the goal of irrigation includes removal of debris, tissue dissolution, antibacterial action and lubrication of the canal walls. Before going further, we should know the ideal properties an irrigant should possess. See, an irrigant should be effective germicidal with prolonged antimicrobial action. It should be non-irritating to periapical tissues and should not interfere with the repair of periapical tissues. It should have low surface tension for more wettability of the canals. It should be able to remove the smear layer. Now question is, do you know what the smear layer is? See, the smear layer is the film of debris which is retained on the dentine surface after hand or the rotary instrumentation. Apart from these properties, an irrigant should be non-toxic, non-carcinogenic, inexpensive, non-staining, stable and easy to apply. Not all irrigants possess all these properties. So instead of using a single irrigant, one should practice of using them in the combinations. Now we'll discuss sodium hypochlorite as an endodontic irrigant. Sodium hypochlorite is most popular irrigating solution used in the dentistry. It was first recommended by Henry Deakin in 1915 in the World War II, where it was used for healing of the open wounds. Therefore, it's also known as Deccan solution. It is best known for its antibacterial action with broad spectrum antibacterial activity against vegetative bacteria, spore forming bacteria, virus and fungi. Another property of sodium hypochlorite is its ability to dissolve the organic tissues. But this tissue dissolving property depends on its concentration, time of contact, and amount of sodium hypochlorite used as an irrigant. Now, if we look at the mechanism of action, basically three types of reactions they occur during this antibacterial action. First is saponification reaction, second is neutralization reaction, third is chloramination reaction. Now, we'll discuss each reaction in detail. First is saponification reaction. In this reaction, when sodium hypochlorite reacts with the fatty acids, it results in the formation of soap and glycerol. 
This formation of soap produces a surface tension of remaining solution. This you already know. What is the advantage of reduction in surface tension? Yes, it increases the wettability of the canals. So next reaction is neutralization reaction. In this reaction, sodium hypochlorite neutralizes the amino acids and form water and salt. This formation of water causes exit of hydroxyl ions. Thus, there occurs decrease in pH. And due to this decrease in pH, hypochlorous acid, a substance present in the sodium hypochlorite, comes in the play. Now, what does it do? This hypochlorous acid, when it comes in contact with the organic tissues, it acts as a solvent and releases chlorine. This chlorine combines with the amino acid group of proteins and form chloramines. This is called chloramination reaction. This formation of chloramines interferes with the cell metabolism and cause killing of the bacteria. So we can see that three types of reactions that is saponification reaction, neutralization reaction and chloramination reaction are responsible for antibacterial action of sodium hypochlorite. Another property of sodium hypochlorite is tissue dissolution. So its property of dissolving the organic tissues is directly related to its concentration. Now what does it mean? This means that 5.25% of sodium hypochlorite is more effective in dissolving the tissues than 1% of sodium hypochlorite. But one should keep in mind that toxicity of sodium hypochlorite is also related directly to its concentration. So to keep the balance between tissue dissolution and toxicity, low concentration of sodium hypochlorite should be used. Now to have optimal tissue dissolution with the low concentration of sodium hypochlorite, few measures can be taken so as to increase the efficacy of sodium hypochlorite. This can be done in various uh, methods like First is warming of sodium hypochlorite in the water bath at 60 degrees centigrade. It can be done by keeping the syringes filled with sodium hypochlorite in the hot water bath. Second method is by increasing the time of contact of sodium hypochlorite with the canal walls. How it can be done? Yes, by increasing the volume and time of the irrigation. Another method of increasing the efficacy of sodium hypochlorite is by agitating it using the gutta percha or ultrasonic. These methods have shown to increase the efficacy of sodium hypochlorite in the canal. So now if we summarize the advantages and disadvantages of sodium hypochlorite, these can be advantages are dissolution of organic tissue, antibacterial action, as other irrigants, it has lubrication action and it's economical in nature. And if we see the disadvantages of sodium hypochlorite, these are irritations to the periapical tissue. It has bad odor. It can damage the clothes as it is bleaching. It has bleaching nature and it is corrosive to the instruments. I hope you understood this topic well. Now try to solve these questions. If any doubt, kindly let me know. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more discussions. Take care and goodbye.